Was this the game of the year? Skip, I don't know about the game of the year, but it was the greatest fourth quarter and the greatest five, six minutes of a ball game that I've seen in a very, very long time. And given what Lamar Jackson did, so Skip, if you want to say because of what Lamar did, being in the locker room for those final two, for, for two, almost two drives and coming back cold. Skip, he didn't come back at the start of the drive. He came back on fourth and five. And so if you want to say, Skip, so no, okay. With, with that being with that being the 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 the, the storyline, yes, it was the game of the year. Considering what Lamar Jackson did going into the locker room, and if you want to say he had a Paul Pierce or a Willis Reed moment, whatever you want to say, given the I'll, I'll go Willis Reed because Paul <laughs> Pierce was a little phony to me. The wheelchair moment, yeah. let's not do that. Given what he had to do in that moment, Skip, it was unbelievable. 35 points in the fourth quarter alone. And whatever Lamar was doing, Baker's like, nah, I'm not going to be outdone tonight. And Baker just kept coming back and coming back and coming back. And you look at and Cleveland's got to be thinking to themselves, Skip, hold on, bro. We just put 500 yards. We scored 42 points. Baker threw for almost 400 yards. And we still lost. Mm. Yeah, because the heroics of Lamar Jackson. Skip, neither defense could stop the other, uh, uh, the opposing team's offense. And I'm surprised at the way Cleveland's defense approached Lamar Jackson. Skip, they just kept letting him get contained, out of contain, out of contain. And it was the exact same thing, Skip. I think it was a Sunday night about two weeks ago. We saw the Oakland Raiders blitz. They let Mahomes get to the right side. And the one thing you don't want to have happen is let a quarterback get to his dominant arm. Yep. He's a right-handed quarterback, so he if is. you blitz and make him go left, you don't let him get outside because now you're at his mercy. Mahomes did the same thing. He got outside. He bought time. Found Travis Kelsey for a touchdown. And what did they do? They blitz up the middle. They let Lamar get to his dominant hand. He gets outside. He finds Hollywood Brown, who had just dropped a pass earlier on third down. Skip unknown what might have been the play of this game that's not being talked about was the third down completion to Willie Sneed by Trace McSorley. It's big. Because it gave it Lamar Jackson. Because I'm not sure jo uh, uh, John Harbaugh is going to go for it. Good I don't, point. Yeah, Good I, don't, point. I don't think he's nope. going to go for it in that situation, Skip. I think he's going to punt it and probably have to trust his defense. But that gave Lamar an opportunity to come back into the ball game, Skip, the back and forth. Cleveland had 19 more plays. They possessed the ball three more minutes of time of possession. But Lamar Jackson was getting touchdowns and, and going 75 yards running the football. Skip, this is unheard of. Yeah. And again, another 200-plus yard day running the football with Lamar Jackson. Skip, if you don't take his legs away, it's hard for them to beat. It's hard for you to beat the Ravens if they don't turn it over. But Skip, if Lamar Jackson could ever get his arm I'm not saying 85, 90%. If he could just get his arm to 65, 70% of his legs, he's going to be in the MVP conversation every single year. Mm -hmm. And he can do it because I think we're going to talk about Josh Allen, Skip. Josh Allen completion percentage is 16 points higher than what it was his rookie season. It's 10 points higher than what it was last year. So this is something Lamar can – now he's he going to have to prove his mechanic because he missed two throws, Skip. You can't miss those throws. You can't, you got to have them. But last night, Lamar Jackson showed you something. Baker showed you something. But it was just Lamar's time to just upstage mm. Baker in a big moment. Whew. <laughs> All great points by you. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> this was fairy tale. It was storybook. It was better than fiction. I thought at the end of the game of one of my all-time favorite writers whose poem is the reason the Ravens are called the Ravens. <laughs> and he's a Edgar. Baltimore native, native, or he was, named Edgar, Edgar Allan Poe. Poe. Yep. And he wrote a poem called The Raven. And the Raven's name, his name is Poe. That is correct. <laughs> and he was known for incredibly creative writing, most of it in the, the areas of gloom and doom, doom. And death and destruction, <laughs> yeah. macabre. But if he had written this plot, and tried to sell it to Hollywood, they'd say, no, it's too unbelievable. Stop it. No. <laughs> and yet it happened. And both quarterbacks were sensational in the clutch. Mm -hmm. And Baker really rose and shone last night, and we'll talk more about him later in the show, but it, it, it was his best game as a pro to me from start to finish, yep. all things considered. Yes. 
That was the baker I knew and loved at the University of Oklahoma, mm -hmm. where he was operating, using his legs as well as his arm, mm -hmm. constantly on the move, rollouts, scrambles, buying time, running with the football, scrambling for a touchdown, sliding into the end zone, just full of you-know-what and vinegar mm -hmm. because he's at his best when he is at his hot doggy most arrogant. <laughs> that's, that's what fuels and that's who he yep. is. And that was vintage Baker. And yet Lamar came back in from nowhere when I least expected it and said, no, I got you. And remember, they're obviously from the same draft. And you don't think Lamar wanted to stick it to Baker in Baker's house? Yeah. It's literally Baker's house. Mm -hmm. We have to watch Baker's house every other commercial, and we had to all last night. And I still say the target he keeps painting on his back gets bigger and bigger. But last night, he lived up to I, it. I think every progressive commercial is shot in that stadium. It is. <laughs> no, it is. So Lamar, and by the way, there was one vintage moment when Lamar scored early and threw the ball against a sign up against the dog pound. And he caught it. Yeah, and, and it came, came right, right back, back to him. And I said, this is magical, man. This might be his night. And then Baker scored when he slid into the end zone, and he fired a ball at the sign on the side of the stadium. Don't think he wasn't trying to he bounce was, it up the wall and catch it. He was. He was trying to do it. And yet it came down to those crucial few minutes when we saw Lamar leave the football field. And – the first thing I thought of on injury was this play. I'd like to show one play, and it happened with about six and a half minutes left in the third quarter. And this is where I thought Lamar went a little over the edge. I know the play you're talking you know, about. And he took off running, and you've got to slide, or you're not going to last in this league. They made and, him cut back. And he, and, and he just said, I got, oh, God. Yeah. And when he did that, I said, no, you can't. That That's like... <sighs> That's RG3 revisited kind of a play. God it's, bless him. Skip, it's always that play because you don't – the guy – you see that guy that's making you cut back, but he's making you cut back into traffic because this guy's coming with cruel oh. intentions. And I don't know if he – I don't know if he really saw him. He did not, and he got rocked. Yeah. So, Jameson Hensley, who covers for ESPN.com, the Ravens, does a great job. He wrote in his piece today that – that Lamar, and remember, he, he did have a, he, he caught COVID. You right. know, he had to go through right. a COVID bout, and, and they reported last night on the telecast that he, he slept for 10 straight days. So he, he got rocked by right. the, the virus. Right. He, he wasn't asymptomatic. He no, was, he was he symptom. symptoms. He definitely did. Jameson Hensley writes that Lamar began experiencing cramps in his right arm with five minutes left in the third quarter. Well, that, that would be about a minute and a half after that play. Right. Well, was it from that? Was it some kind of spinal type where, where you're getting shooting pains down your arm? Is right. it some kind of stinger mm -hmm. type situation? I don't know. Right. So that was my first thought. When he went to the locker room, I thought, uh-oh, did he get hurt on that play? Right. Then they reported cramps, and Jameson Hensley goes on to, to write that he began experiencing cramps in both legs. In well, both you can legs. tell the way he was running, Skip. He was running stiff-legged. A little gingerly? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, back to you. You played this game at the highest level. Mm -hmm. You're in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. From my experience covering the game, it is very rare to suffer cramps when the temperature at game time is 34 and the wind chill is 23 because it's so cold you don't sweat nearly as much as usual. But here's the thing, Skip, and I had a problem. I had this very problem with cramp because I didn't like drinking water. I didn't like anything in okay, my well, stomach. That's, that's a problem. And here's yes. the thing, Skip. Also, your body is working, ex although you don't see the perspiration, your body is working extra hard to keep you warm. So you're burning more energy than you think, and, and now you exacerbate the problem by not drinking water. And so I believe that's what happened with Lamar, the very thing that would happen with me. And my trainer, Steve Antonopoulos, say, Sharpie, I know you don't want drink like, but you got to drink because I had problems in the cramp, and I couldn't understand. The very same thing you said, Skip, I'm like, man, it's 20 degrees, it's 30 degrees, why am I cramping? But it was because I wasn't drinking water, and my body was working extra hard to keep me warm. And obviously, Lamar was working extra <laughs> yeah. hard because he'd already run for uh, a Monday a Monday night they, football they, record of yep. 124 yards rushing. Correct. So, to me, you rarely see cramps. You, it you, is. If it's hot weather, if it's at Miami oh, in you December, yeah. you, you see guys all over the yeah. field, and they're down from right. the cramps because you know, and I definitely know from 
the many marathons I ran, when you cramp, you cramp. It's over. It is over. And for, <laughs> for those of you who even in bed at night, if you ever get locked up where your calf locks up, you think you're going to die for a second. Mm. That's why players go down and you think, oh, he's hurt. Oh, it's just a cramp. Thank God for that. That's what they say, Skip. It's just a cramp. But I cramp like that. Uh, you're talking about like um, worse than what Lamar had, Skip. In, in training camp, it was hot, 100 degrees, and I always wore sleeves. Yep. But my body locked up. And it took five and a half bags of IV. Okay. All right. So you dropped 13 pounds in a practice. Okay. So I did not see Lamar go down with no, the cramp, I didn't right? And and so it surprised me. And he was able to continue. He was ginger, but he continued to walk. I also thought he'd put the longer cleats on it. And when he was walking up the ramp, it's so slippery. He had to right. be a little careful as he trotted, or he's going to slip on the long cleats because he was slipping so badly on the that, field. And as Skip, I kept tweeting. I said the type the type of cleats that he has are not conducive. You have to understand, you're in Cleveland. It's at night. It's damp. It's wet. The speed, the tempo bottoms is what they call. Mm -hmm. yeah. I said he needed to change to a seven stud mm -hmm. so he can go down a little bit into the grass. Once he did that, Skip, he never slipped again. He had the molded cleats he had the mold, as opposed right. to the studs. Yes, where you have he to, needed the seven they're studs. They're like screwed in, yes. you know, right? Yes. right? And, and guys, don't nobody like they're, they're tough on your feet, Skip, because I would practice in the tempo. They're terrible. Yeah, I would practice with those, it. and then I would wear the seven studs in the game yeah. to try to save my feet. But you have to understand, sometimes I, I never went out to warm up. And that's why you might would always ask, okay, go out, warm up, test your cleats, see what you like. And I would always ask the guys, so what do you think? How's the turf? Ask yeah. Doug West and Flip, who was our equipment man. What is the turf like? Yep. And so that would give me an idea of the type of shoe that I would okay. need. So Lamar goes in, and obviously Twitter ran wild with the notion maybe he needed a bathroom break, right? <laughs> no. And it's possible he did. I don't know what happened, but he was just adamant after the game, I cramped up. Right. I believe him. And it was written that he needed IV. Yes. Okay, so he needed a saline solution mm -hmm. of intravenous fluids. Right. So you're going to have to get the needle in your arm, right. and you're going to have to sit for a few minutes and okay. let it run through your system yes. to obviously rehydrate right. you, right? Yes. Okay. You're and looking then, at anywhere between five to ten minutes. Okay. And then he said he was getting re-stretched by the trainer because right. everything's crampy, your calves, right. everything's locked up. Right. So he's stretching, he's stretching, and I assume he's watching it on the right. TV. And and he said that all of a sudden I was catching an attitude because he saw what was happening. Because right. he left, it was 34 to 20. Right. Right? Correct. And it, look, Baker had just thrown his first interception in forever, mm -hmm. and it looked like ball game, Right. right? Right. And then all of a sudden, it looked like it was Baker's Well, Skip, time. he didn't have a choice because they got no other quarterbacks. RG3 is on IR. Trace McSorley had just gone down. Our, uh, um, Lamar is the only quarterback unless they go to the emergency quarterback. And I'm thinking, Willis Sneed the fourth or Hollywood Brown is going to be your options. Yep. So it's fourth down, Skip, fourth and five, and you got to go to, to Willis Sneed the fourth or you go to Hollywood Brown to try to pick up a fourth down. Yep. And then to your point, he returns just as – Almost like right on schedule, No, and no offense, I'm knocking on wood for Trace. I hope he's okay because he got his left leg caught underneath him and it Correct. looked not it looked, good. It looked bad. It did. Right? Yes. Left knee, mm -hmm. wrenched. Don't know what the outcome right. of that was. But if if Trace doesn't get hurt, I don't know what happens. Right. I, I don't know. Could he complete a fourth down pass? He's capable. He's a tough kid. He, he's a gamer. Well, I, I, Joe Woods, must, the defensive coordinator must have, from Cleveland, must have thought that was Mike Sorley still in the ball game. Because otherwise, I don't understand why you would blitz him in that situation. And Skip, you, if you blitz up the middle, you must tell your end, you've got to maintain contain. Because Skip, if you get wiped, because even if he didn't throw it, he's going to pick up the first down with his legs. Yep. You realize we were real close to that being Willie Sneed? Yes. Because he was the emergency quarterback as the receiver who had yes. just caught the big pass right. from, from Trace McCorley, Correct. Yes. Right? That, that almost <laughs> saved the game right there. So we almost had a Willie Sneed fourth down, and I don't know what John Harbaugh would have done if he would have just said, I give up or I. Skip, I, and this is another reason. Coaches always say it's kind of hard to have two quarterbacks that are very different yep. on your roster mm -hmm. because now – Greg Roman. Remember, RG3 is now hurt, hurt on and he the was the backup. Correct. Yeah. But now, Skip, you got to call plays. You go from calling plays from for Lamar Jackson to basically calling plays for Mar uh, Trace McSorley, yep. who's more of a drop back than more of a mobile quarterback on the move. So now you got to go into a totally different – because I'm like, I'm good. I'm calling plays on Lamar. I'm dialing up. It's going yep. good. And now I got Trace McSorley. So now I got to think about, okay – what can he do really well yep. against what they're trying to take away from yeah, us? Yeah, exactly. 
So Lamar breaks contain. He gets outside. He's on the move, and he looked a thousand percent healthy, back yeah. to life, right? Mm -hmm. And he is such a threat that corners and safeties just freeze. And Hollywood, who had already dropped two, you could argue three, three passes yes. before, yes, he just breaks free behind them because they're frozen, and Lamar just floats it pretty right up to him and yeah. into his hands, and it's here we go. And that's the thing that's so hard, Skip, when you're dealing with guys like Lamar and dealing with guys like Kyler. Ky uh, Skip, you got to stay plastered. Mm. Because if you come up, everybody, that's your guy. But you saw he was about to run to get the first down. Don't worry about that. If he gets the first down, we can live with that. We make him go four, three, four more downs. Well, I think they decided in their subconscious he's a bigger threat <laughs> to run than to throw. Because yes. he had, I think he had at that point like 80 yards passing. Right, right he around did. 80. He had, he had more yards on the final two drives than he had in the previous three, two and right. a half quarters. So then he comes back for the final possession, and instead of running, they go throw, 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 and he goes 14 and 14 to Mark Andrews, and then a six-yard completion and a four-yard completion, and all of a sudden, the greatest distance kicker <laughs> I have ever seen. He I is. have never seen anything like <laughs> Justin Tucker. And he's small, he, man. Skip, he's, he's not a big small. man. He's small. No one has ever gotten the lift on kicks yes. that this, this young man gets. They launch. Yes. I don't know how he gets it up so high so quick, quick, but it just launches. He's 42 of 49 in his career from 50 plus yards. That's, That's that, unheard a of. lot of guys are, are that, that good or bad on extra points, right? Yep. If he was in a dome, yep. you could understand it. I agree. It. If, you, if he kicked in Miami or Tampa or warm weather, you could understand it. He's kicking in Baltimore. He he's is. kicking in Pittsburgh. He's kicking in Cleveland. He's kicking in Cincinnati. Whew. The lion's share of his career. And for him to have that, those kind of numbers, it just goes to show you. I agree with you. He's the greatest distant clicker, kicker. Now, obviously, Benatari is more clutch because he's had more opportunities. But Benatari ain't... Definitely, yes. Benatari ain't kicking bombs like no, he... No, remember, he bombs. kicked that 61 yard and beat Detroit on a Monday... I think I it was you. a Monday night. And when I think of distance, I think of Sebastian Janikowski, and he was like 225, maybe 250. <laughs> oh, I don't yeah, know. yeah. Maybe, oh, I, yeah. Right? Yeah. And and this is a slender young man who was undrafted. Right. Undrafted? Are Und you kidding me? And look what he did again. And he constantly does that. And he's got a chance on the arc he's on to eclipse Adam Vinatieri. Yes. Right? Yeah. He's okay. Back to the, the question. Was this the game of the year? I got to tell you, I'm racking my brain. And maybe I this is happening too fast. But it, it might be the greatest Monday night game ever. Mm -hmm. And I hark back to one that we just raved and gushed about here for an entire show back. It was played on November 19th of 2018, a Monday night game, remember, between Jared Goff and Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes. Yes. And that was final score Rams winning 54 to 51. But what undercut the greatness of that Turnovers. duel was Mahomes had a rough night. Right. He had, it was great bad. Right. And we see that occasionally from right. him. But he was great. He threw for 478, six touchdowns. Three interceptions, two lost fumbles. Right. So Mahomes had five turnovers. Right. Same kind of game. Both teams combined for 35 fourth quarter points, right. but it never seemed like this. Right. It didn't yeah. feel like the shootout that this was. Maybe, maybe the Skip, you remember the Jets, Miami, that Monday night game? That I they, do. They ended up having that. That was a good one. But Skip, this, for the amount of the seesaw back and forth in the last three minutes, you're like, well, Cleveland got this one. And then, like, did he just go down the field? Running the football, did he just go down the field in like a minute? No, it wasn't even a minute because he came in. As soon as he came in, the fourth to five, he threw a touchdown. So in like 10 seconds, he has the lead to get the two-point conversion. Now they're up seven. And you're like, okay, Baker, what you got? Yep. Baker says, I got this. You're like, oh, well, they're going to overtime. Lamar said, uh, no, we're not. And I mean, my thing was, oh, Chuck, you got 55 in you? That's good from 60 plus. Yeah, it was. No, I agree. So – I'm going to go out on the end of the limb and say, I can't remember a better regular season <laughs> no, game in this decade, no. in this decade, mm -mm. than that one. So I'll go regular season game of the decade. Obviously, the Brady comeback in the Super Bowl against right. the Falcons. Right. I don't know if, if it's great, bad. It's, right. it's like greatness on one side and really not greatness by the Falcons. Right. But obviously, they came from 20, 28 to 3. 23, down. 25 points Woo. down. That, that'll work at, for great. That was on the Super Bowl stage, but this is regular season. Monday night doesn't get any better than this. It doesn't, Skip. And you look at what happened was is that when Jimmy Smith, the thing that Ravens can do, they can pressure you because they got, you know, three number one draft picks at the corner position. Jimmy Smith, Marlon Humphrey, and, and, and Peters, Marcus Peters. Uh, but once Jimmy Smith went down, 
they had to bring his back up in. And remember, Marcus Peters went out mid-fourth quarter right. with some kind of calf. Yeah, I, I think it might have been he slipped. He was looking in the backfield, yep. and the guy turned and ran and got yep. a touchdown on So I think it was more of his pride than Maybe. his leg. Maybe. But, Skip, when you get what we call in football, we call it a fish. And when you get a fish, Skip, you don't let him go now. You don't let him off the hook. You make sure you take him to the market. Yep. And you see what Baker was doing. He's like, I'm not fooling with you, Marlon. I'm not fooling with you, Peters. Mm -hmm. I got him. And if y'all don't give him help, yep. oh, we're going to go right down the field on him. And what did they do? Boom, boom, boom. But, mm -hmm. and I think they also knew Bowser made a heck of a play, Skip. Ooh. When we say buzz the flat, that's what we mean. Get out under the flat route. Take away the out. Take away the hook route. That's what yeah. you're supposed to, that's how you play it. It was almost like a zone blitz where you thought he was coming yeah. and then he just backed out and broke. Yes. And, and Baker didn't make a, t I think he got a little fooled. He didn't anticipate. And remember, that's his first interception, 187 throws. Yes. And what a snag it was, yeah, one-handed snag. Yes. Normally, he, Skip, most times, that's an incomplete. Yeah. The ball hits his hand and it goes to the ground. So when that happened, and he, he nearly picked six did. Yes. And it took one play, touchdown. Mm -hmm. I thought that was it. Yeah. I thought that was the end of the line for Baker and, and the Browns as we had loved them recently. And then here they storm back, and there went Lamar to the locker Skip, room. Skip, you look at Baltimore, and they're going 70 yards in four plays, touchdown. They go, obviously, after that play right there, one play, a touchdown. And then they go nine for 79 for a touchdown. Skip, they're getting... They, when you run the ball, you're like, oh, man, they about to chew up eight, nine, ten minutes of the clock. Skip, they're chewing up a minute, two minutes, running the football. Mm. That's unheard of. Wow. But I don't know what Cleveland's skip. If I'm playing the Baltimore Ravens, same with the Tennessee Titans, the Cleveland Browns, I got to make your quarterback beat me throwing the football, Skip. Mm. They're the top three rushing team. Lamar Jackson is more dangerous with his legs than with his arms. And somehow, the creases that they were letting, that he was getting, I'm like, bro, do, do y'all watch film? Does anybody watch film, Skip? Does anybody study anymore? Yeah. He's just so explosively <laughs> quick and fast. He it's is. unbelievable. I think it doesn't even show up on tape just yeah. how quick and fast Well, you can't he is. simulate that because I remember the, uh, the Cowboys said, well, we had Cedric Wilson playing no. quarterback to try to mimic Lamar. No. 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 And by the way, you realize his QBR last night was 99.5, which is pretty close to 100, and that was – tied for the eighth best of all time QBR, and four of the top eight belong to that man, Lamar. He looked like the reigning MVP <laughs> last night. That's the first time all year that was an MVP caliber. So if you think about, Skip, the, the three, the two drops that he had yep. by Hollywood yep. and the two overthrows, he really should have been perfect. From yep. He should have been perfect throwing the football. 99.5, mm -hmm. Skip. Wow, that's Ooh. incredible. Oh, well, They've had their tough moments, but that was so special was the special way they got it night. done. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.